All right, welcome back. In case you're just joining us, it's still Money Line with Nancy, and it's time for our discussion segment right now. Celeste so KK, a lead partner at Seeds and Seeds Main Sustainable Entrepreneurship and Economic Development Initiative. Celeste, so good to see you. How are you today? Fine, Nancy. Good morning. Good, good morning. Um, this program today was actually inspired by my encounter two days ago. Uh, you know, you've been on the show a lot of times. We've talked about MSMEs. We've spoken about um, raising funds and all of that. But it seems that, you know, the many times I keep talking about one thing, it seems never to go away and <laughs> because we've not seen, you know, a lasting solution. I know that government has come up with a lot of uh, intervention funds, a lot of processes to help uh, unlock finance, to make small businesses assess them. But it seems never to go away. Two days ago, um, a young man, unmarried, came to my office. I didn't know him. He said he just wanted to see me. That he was, let me just give you what he told me, that he sells provisions. He used to sell provisions. That's how he put it. And that the sales from his provision store, he used it to set up a pure water, pure water factory. factory. That's the sachet water, pure water factory that he's even go, gone to NAVDAC. NAVDAC told him, gave him a paper of certification, fine. They came to inspect everything is on their well. But he told me that he hooked, that all his money now hooked. So what he wanted to do, he wanted to raise money to buy equipment. He went to his microfinance bank because I did ask, okay, fine, the amount of money you're asking for a microfinance bank should do that. He told me he went to a microfinance bank that he banks with and they, he has a land somewhere in Guagualada. I'm giving you a practical example so that we start from there. Why I'm doing this? Because I know a lot of people are in that same, are in that same situation. That the bank valued the land in Guagualada and came back to him and said it was not up to the money he was applying, applying for, which was about three million naira for equipment. And he, he told me very sadly, he said, and the bank, the microfinance bank, also took 50,000 naira from for his valuation. for valuation. Yeah. He said he went to BOI. He didn't get any response. In fact, he did. <laughs> I don't even just want to say what he said. But that an official that he met in BOI did tell him that he should pay 50,000 naira to his account. This was a true situation in my office on Tuesday. So I, I, I don't know. I had to turn to a psychologist, turn to a business consultant. Do you understand what I'm saying? But after that, I was like, I knew a lot of people would also be in this situation. So I needed to do a show about this. Talk to me about this practical experience I have just put to you. Okay, let me start by saying MSMEs have two broad needs, the financial and the non-financial. Yeah, yes. And the challenge in Nigeria is that we place so much emphasis on the financial, financial need for money. And I'll tell you, need for money is, is, not, is not even in the top three. It's not in the top three. Because let's even com come from the angle of the young man who came to meet you. He approached the microfinance bank after he had invested some parts of his fund into a business, which then shows that he doesn't have a plan, a workable plan. Because if he had a workable plan, the first step would have been to go to your account officer and say, look, I want to start a pure water business in the next six, seven, eight, nine months. And I have, say, one million, two million that will be able to do X, Y, Z. So I want to understand how your bank finances such businesses. Where do I put in the money I have? Now, do I leave it as a equity contribution towards the loan you would give me? The bank would be in a better position to advise him at that point in time. Because most times, when we apply for loan and we need five million for that loan, it's possible 3.5 is going for equipment, not necessarily cash we want to hold. So if we don't understand all of those dynamics, most times we shoot ourselves in the foot before we approach the bank. So most of the things he has bought with his money are things the bank would have been able to finance for him as equipment. And then say, okay, what working capital do you need. So like I said, finance is not in the top three. The first major challenge you have is the culture of entrepreneurship. It's not deep in Nigeria. Most people take the entrepreneurship out of a need for survival. I don't have a job. I lost my job. I've searched for a job for three, four, five years. Or like in his case, I'm not saying mm -hmm. that's what happened. He has a provision store and he sees pure water business as a very big, good, lucrative business. The next thing he wants to invest mm -hmm. in it. Has he sat down to talk to guys who are more experienced in that field to advise him on how to start? Which it? I asked him. Is there a possibility for mm -hmm. him to start small? Start small, then you, uh, you establish a cash flow and experience well on that business. How can he start small if he doesn't even have money to provide the equipment? Because he told me that he's down and out. Then I asked him, 
What do you do to survive? What do you do now to get so, money so to he, eat? He left the business where he was already assured of some kind of income and went into a business he wasn't sure was going to be able to start, which is a big problem. That's why I talked about the culture of entrepreneurship in Nigeria is the biggest problem. Finance is in the top five, not in the top three. You need to have that culture entrenched where we understand what it takes to start a business. It's a whole lot of steps starting a business. We need to get back to the basics. I'm sure he might, maybe he's a graduate. What did he learn about entrepreneurship while in the University of Polytechnic? Next to nothing. Why he was running the provision store? What other kind of extra le learning did he put into learning what to do while running a business? Maybe next to nothing. So we keep thinking finance is the major issue. Oh, I need five million to start a business. And you have not learned what is the condition of that uh, market you want to play in. You've not learned how the banks. And I tell you something, we ran a survey sometime last year. Eight out of ten people who approached the microfinance bank in Abuja here for loan application did not know what the RAC. RAC means risk assessment criteria that the banks use. They don't know it. And these are something but you go you, you, yes, you go you go on their website or even ask the account officer. In the case of this young man, if he had asked ahead of time, he but would he have told him this is how we assess he our told risk. Me, he told me that the account officer kept on encouraging him that he would get the funds. At what point? After he had made the investment or before making the after investment or before making the investment. And I also bring something out to why we say the entrepreneurs are not all ready to run businesses. I will tell you for a fact to several banks today employ people and throw them into the industry. People who are less than them as they're not even prepared for the banking industry. So they don't even also understand their product papers that the banks that are, they are employing them are using. They don't understand it. Oh, you want a loan, okay, open an account, run it for three months. They also do not even understand the dynamics behind how the risk department of their bank will, will evaluate every request being made. So it's a big problem. I talked about the, the cost of entrepreneurship is very low. From the government side, from the entrepreneurs themselves, and even from the banks that are meant to finance MSME, we are not, we've not yet started the journey. We have not started the So journey. from what you're saying, education is key first. It's very key. On the path of a person that wants to st start or undertake a new business. It's very key. If you don't have the right education, you will make the right decision. Decision to invest. Like so now, the, 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 the question also will be, how would you seek that education? Uh, this which is why did you understand? How do, do you seek? People like you can give that kind of advice. How do they assess people like you? Is it consultants now that they will pay for their services? They don't even have that money to pay for. No. In our own case, we run a hub here for small businesses. You walk in, you schedule an appointment, you walk in, we give you up to three hours maximum on each time you come in. We give you advice. That's free. those people that have access to you, no, Celeste. It's, it's open, which yeah. is why I say they need to you stash. You, you need to seek knowledge to find knowledge. But on, 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 on one, one, one other side, we've advised BOI, Bank of Industry, we've advised Midan to say, look, place more emphasis on non-financial services. Help people to build their businesses. Help people to understand capacity. how to run their businesses. So when they have that capacity, I tell you, with 100,000 or with the right frame of mind, you can turn it to a million in less than one year. But if you don't have the right frame of mind and understanding, if I give you a million today, there is no guarantee to remain a million tomorrow. So no. we need to shift attention from financial to non-financial services. People need to understand why you go into a business, what you do in the business, and what you don't do in the business. And I'll tell you something. I just came back from the Northeast where we did a project in Adamawa, Yobi, and Borono State for small businesses. Everybody said money is your problem. Money is our challenge. Money is our challenge. We need finance. We need finance. And on the last day of each of the trainees in the state, they get paid per dime for coming from Monday to Friday. And three days after, we basically started calling them, oh, what did you do with your money you were paid? Dude, it's not the much you expected for your business, but still like maybe 20, 30%. One boldly told me he's been saving up for wedding, and he just got more money to put into the savings for wedding. And I said, why not your business? Say, ah, he's too old, he wants to get married. <laughs> How long will he be married? And I asked him a question. If you marry, you are bringing a wife who would eat from your table, who would get pregnant in nine months or thereabout give birth to a baby in a year plus, more expenses comes in. What is the capacity of your business to carry such expenses? So why not invest everything you have now, grow your business for another six, seven, eight, nine months so you can carry expense for you? So despite the fact they felt finance was their biggest need, when they had money, what did they do with it? I'll tell you also, under the UIN program, Several guys got 10 million. Now, what did they do with it? That Convo was the former you win. Not former you win Connect now. No, no, you, because it's not, you it's not even a program. That's it's not even, even, a, even a program. That's it's another not a program. show for another day. It's not, it's not a pro pro program. Mm. I, I don't see it as a program. Mm. When some guys got 10 million, they did consumption financing. What does it mean? You upgrade your phone, upgrade your wardrobe, upgrade your telly, buy a better one. Mm. From the 10 Rent million. a new house, if possible. Uh, 
change one or two yes. things. And by the time they finish doing those corruption financing, the capital in their hand reduced. So I keep saying access to finance is not the big challenge. It's not even in the top three. Now, as from your analysis, it's not in the top three. The next question will be for a startup there or for someone with a business idea that has a business plan, that has all those things. The next thing is finance. How do I assess finance? We know MSMS clinics around the country piloted by uh, acting president, Professor Yemiya Shibaju. BOI is also saying we're having intervention funds. DM, DBN coming up with um, our funds for MSMEs to be channeled through microfinance right. banks. The question is, how do I assess those funds right now? So for, that so for that guy, I think his name is Obina, I think. So yes. if you, the same, uh, let me paint this uh, picture here now. You have 100,000 in your account somewhere. And I approach you and say, oh, hi, Nancy, I need 100,000 to run a business. I'll pay you back in six months. What would be your primary concern? Ability for me to pay you back. That's where the rack comes in. You begin to assess the risks. Do I know you? If I know you, that, that will, well, the, the, the issue of the character comes in. What's your capacity for now? What's the condition of the market you want to play in? You, in your mind, you may not ask me those questions, but you run it through your head. If you don't feel satisfied, I will pay you back in six months. You may tell me you, know, I don't, you don't have, but you have that money. But you don't think I can pay you back. So that is no different from when you approach your BOI, your microfinance bank. They assess the risk they want to take on your behalf. If they feel it's worthwhile, if they don't feel it's worthwhile, they won't play in. Now, let me tell you a story. Someone, someone in Adam Austin wants to go into construction work, building construction. And we talked with her and said, look, why not start your block molding factory? You have the capital. Run it for six, seven, eight, nine months, then approach a bank. She started with 100 blocks, from there to 200 to 300. By the time she now approached a bank to say, look, I need money to buy equipment to start Upgrade. construction. The question was, what was your experience? And she brought out her, her history book for her business. The first day she started her customers, the contact details for her customers, how often she gets in touch with her customers, what she has done as follow up from the first transaction the, 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 bank, were con con the bank was convinced which is what is missing for several entrepreneurs. So are you saying the missing link there is that our banks can give loans, yeah. but our entrepreneurs are not ready to and assess and the loans? They are not prepared to take those loans, which is where non-financial services are very key. They are extremely key. You don't take that out. I worked in the banking industry, and I led my small business unit for my branch then, and I had to interface with several small business owners. And you see people come at you for loan. And you, there's something I, I know about that market you are playing in. And you ask the person, he tries to brush it aside. So when you write a business plan, your emphasis should be more on the risk in the business and how you are going to mitigate those risks. If you don't play the risk in your business, I want to think you don't know your business very well. So we need to get ourselves back to the business and begin to think how do we deepen the culture of entrepreneurship. You need to start small and grow big. The guy wants to do a period of time. If he has stayed in his provision business for a longer period of time, generated a cash flow that can speak to what he has. And you talked about his land in Wagolada. Let me tell you something. If you have a piece of land or a property and the value is 100 million, the market value is 100 million, if you come to a bank, they're not going to look at a 100 million property, no. They have their first sale value, FSV, which says if we need to sell this property tomorrow, what is the worst price we'll get for it? So that's what they will tell you, it has to be, if you're applying for 3 million, your property needs to be worth 6, 7, 8, 9 million. So if they have to auction it to recover their money, they can easily get back what they're loaning to you. So these are the information entrepreneurs need to have at the back of their mind before they even approach a bank for a loan. Now, do you think that these uh, uh, financial institutions have lived up to expectation in terms of uh, give providing loans and credit facilities to uh, entrepreneurs, budding entrepreneurs? They, 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 they clearly haven't. If you look at the DFI, the, the, uh, the Development Finance Institutions. Institutions. I, 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 I heard you ma mention DBN. In uh, September or there about last year, DBN put a press release that they've divorced four of the four microfinance banks. I won't call their names. Mm. We did a follow up and talked to the microfinance bank. We had DBN has given you some so loans and the criteria for assessing them. And one of the banks simply told me we don't have such money. We did an FYI request to DBN and said, oh, just tell us the banks you've given the money to. Tell us the MOU you signed with them. Tell us the criteria you agreed they have to use in disbursing this loan. That FYI has not been responded to today. What they did was to use a lawyer to write us to say, look, we are working on the modalities. We'll get back to you in black and white. So most times when you hear government agencies launch intervention funds, they are not, they are not necessarily fund to their assets. 
and, and that is the reality. Because people would also say that the requirements to assess those funds are very stringent. They are not stringent. One, they are not different from what the commercial are they banks stringent? are often very stringent. Yeah. So let's let's take a look at the CBN 220 billion for I've talked MSM about for a long time. Uh, uh, but, yeah, but, but let's let's look at what happened with that fund. The first guideline stated that you have to have 75 percent bank guarantee. Bank guarantee is financial asset to accept whatever you want. So if you need a million from CBN under the CBN MSME fund, you need to get 75% bank grant, which simply means you have to deposit 75% of that value to a commercial or microfinance bank and get a bank guarantee. Now, who would do that? Why would I put 75,000 naira because I need 100,000 when I'll still pay interest on the 100,000? It lingered for a year plus, they reduced it to 50%. It was still the same challenge. Why would I do it? So when the, I say the coalition has stringent, they are not just stringent for the sake of being there. Most times, like I said too, these funds are not meant to be assessed. Why, but if they, they are not meant, if they are not meant to be assessed, why would government go all the way and take all the labor to, uh, you know, have those funds there and come out, spend money on television, press conferences that we've unlocked? Don't also forget that the DMBs in Nigeria, commercial banks. Was it early this year, late they last year? They put they some funds together. together. No, so each time I see such interventions being launched, one thing I look out for is the guideline. Because the guideline now details how MSMEs can assess the fund. And I tell you, for let's say three out of five of such interventions, they, they are not launched with guidelines. They, they are launched, they're much later, they start thinking around the guidelines. The announcements. And now you, when they now launch the guideline eventually, you wouldn't see anything different from the guidelines for the funds that were not assessed five, six years. So does it mean that uh, those loans, are I, I don't want to say those loans are not accessible. They are, but they are stringent, isn't uh, it? And how many people assess those at loans? At the end of the day, we, we keep saying, okay, before you launch a new intervention, can you tell us what happened with the last intervention? You, you don't have such data. But uh, we, we also need to look at the fact that for small businesses the world over, startups, the source of funding for most of them are not necessarily from bank. Now, they are from. you just... They are, they are not from bank. Yes. It's the culture of the world over. Yes, you are trying to bring out the next question, which is the final question. What are all the alternative sources of funding in case you don't get monies from bank? So if you look at the U.S., for instance, in the last five years, the bulk of the small businesses that, that sprang up in the U.S. are Asian-owned businesses, the Chinese, the Koreans, and the rest. What they simply do is they have rotating credit association where you have a community of 10, 20 persons pool funds in and they rotate the credit amongst themselves. Like families, we have cooperatives corp here. Cooperatives, families mm -hmm. come into and throw in fund. And one key missing link for us here is, you find a church in the U.S. that say has maybe has like 100 members. They have a rotating credit association among in that church. They pool funds and they support each other. It's clearly missing here. Yeah. Startups don't rely on banks for their fixed funding. It doesn't work. Because a bank who is going to give you money for your first, as the first intervention for your business, has to weigh the risk. Risk. Okay, let's take a few comments before we go. Michael Lushago says, why is it that people with genuine business ideas uh, find it difficult to get financial support in Nigeria? I think that's what we've been discussing. So if I, if I would answer his question, Very quickly. when you go with your bank idea, you have what we call surplus optimism. But the banker has abundant reality, realism. He's, he's a realist. Your optimism will not sway him. He's interested in can you pay back? Can you pay back? Okay. Lastly, Dele says uh, most SMEs in Nigeria are unable to assess funding due to poor leadership emanating from lack of training and poor capacity building. Most people go into business, uh, businesses without adequate knowledge. I think that's the much 